Hi, it's Charlie Minato from halfwheel.com and last year I did a series of seven humidor reviews and each of those humidors was priced at less than $175. Now towards the end of that series I teased that I was planning on doing another series of humidor reviews but it would be a bit different. And that's because this series of humidor reviews focuses on humidors that are priced at multiple thousands of dollars. And my idea was to pick a humidor each from the three companies that I think of most as operating in that space here in the US. That would be Davidoff, Ellie Blue, and Prometheus. And this is the first of those reviews. It is a humidor from Ellie Blue. So for those of you unfamiliar with Ellie Blue, it is a Paris-based humidor manufacturer and has been making humidors for more than four decades. And I have long thought of Ellie Blue as sort of the luxury humidor company. And there are a number of reasons why. First are the prices. Ellie Blue does not make inexpensive humidors, it does not make moderately priced humidors. Ellie Blue makes expensive humidors. To my knowledge, there is not an Ellie Blue humidor that you can purchase today for less than $1,000. And because of that, it creates a, a perception that these humidors are very expensive, but it also means that there's a certain floor that's established that's just different. Ellie Blue is not making humidors in China. It's making humidors in France. Ellie Blue is not outsourcing the production of its humidors. It's making its humidors itself. And Ellie Blue's least expensive humidor is more expensive than 99% of the humidors that are sold today. And because of that, the floor is just so much higher in terms of the types of woods it can use, the employees that it can hire, and the amount of time it can spend to make a humidor and do proper quality control. It's just different. The other thing, though, is that the brand is really about humidors. Up until very recently, Ellie Blue basically just made humidors. It also made ashtrays, but it was known as a humidor company. It's now added lighters and cutters. It's still basically known as a humidor company, but it's a bit different than its competitors. You compare it to, say, Davidoff or Prometheus or Daniel Marshall. All three of those companies, for example, sell cigars with their names on them. Ellie Blue does not. And the final reason is because I'm a big believer that you are best judged by your peers. And when cigar companies want to make very expensive releases that they want to sell in humidors, more often than not, it seems like it's they're turning to Ellie Blue. Um, some high profile examples include Arturo Fuente with the Opus X 25th. Both of those humidors are built by Ellie Blue. The My Father Humidor Deluxe, Half Wheel's number one cigar of the year last year, that humidor is made by Ellie Blue. Habanos, the Cuban cigar company, has turned to Ellie Blue for any number of releases. There was the $50,000 Romeo Grand Churchill's humidor that had this interesting curved sort of display tray when you opened it up. That humidor was made by Ellie Blue. The Cohiba 50th humidors uh, that had an MSRP of 200,000 euros when they went to stores, those humidors were made by Ellie Blue. Even Bovida, the humidification company, is celebrating its 25th anniversary, and it's turned to Ellie Blue to make humidors to celebrate the occasion. Altada and Oliva have done the same um, with multiple high-end releases sold in humidors made by Ellie Blue. And I don't think that's by coincidence. So as for the humidor being reviewed today, it is this humidor. It's a 110 count Ellie Blue humidor. It is finished in this rainbow pattern in case you haven't picked up on that. When we purchased the humidor last year, it had an MSRP here in the States of $3,200. Although at the moment, Ellie Blue's international website lists this humidor for 2,634 euros. It is October, 2022. The dollar is very, very strong and 2,600 euros is a lot less money than $3,200. And so at the moment, at least, it seems like it's probably cheaper to purchase this humidor internationally and have it shipped over to the US. I don't know if Ellie Blue's planning on adjusting its prices at some point, but it's something worth considering. And speaking of purchasing the humidor, last year when we sort of greenlit the series, it then meant that I needed to figure out which humidors we were actually going to buy. And that's because we're probably not going to regularly be buying Ellie Blue humidors. And so it was sort of, what was the one humidor that I wanted to purchase from Ellie Blue? And my original thought was a blue humidor because I really liked the way that Ellie Blue's blue humidors look. Don't particularly enjoy saying that, though. But when I saw this humidor in person at the 2021 PCA convention and trade show, or at least this design in person, I decided to call an audible. And it's because I figured if we were going to purchase one Ellie Blue humidor, might as well purchase one that shows off what Ellie Blue does that other companies do not. And that really speaks to sort of the sides of this humidor. So this humidor's exterior is made of dyed sycamore, and there are obviously six different colors. Um, and when you zoom in, you'll notice that you can see that there are six different wood grains. And what's super impressive is that these wood grains just run sort of seamlessly um, from the top of the lid down the side of the humidor, including towards that sort of bottom split piece of the humidor. In the case of the purple and the red, the purple up front and the red in the back, it also means that those panels also have uh, the wood going full length. Ellie Blue made a previous generation rainbow humidor and it only had the lid with this effect. The, the bottom was a solid color. But when I saw this in person, I was just 
amazed but how well the the craftsmanship worked and how the wood sort of just seamlessly flowed and the wood grains were different and i figured this was the humidor to purchase over one of the very attractive looking blue humidors now in terms of the specs like i said it's 110 count humidor or advertised 110 count humidor from ellie blue the exterior measures 15 and three quarters inches wide so from here to here 10 and three quarters inches deep so from here to here and four and a half inches tall so from here to here when you open up the humidor, the inside measures 10 and a quarter inches from here to here, 9.1 inches deep, so from here to here, and then four and one eighths inches in terms of the interior height. Now that is not the usable space, and that's because of the stuff on the lid. So these two removable humidifiers that attach and detach via magnet, pretty easily. And then there is this analog hygrometer that does not easily detach, at least not in a way that I've figured out yet. There are also on the bottom, these two removable dividers and they are removable and adjustable, just like plenty of other humidors. They are a little bit thicker than what most other humidors use. And that's basically what comes with the humidor. There's also an included key that can be removed. And uh, the humidor also comes with some instructions, one of which I really like because it has a little species of the wood. I should point out, Ellie Blue sells a variety of other humidor sizes that are advertised as 110 count humidors. There's ones that's like uh, more of a cube shaped, and there's also one that's a little bit larger, and that one appears to come with a tray. This size does not come with a tray, and I, I think it's probably perfectly fine without it. So those of you that have seen a half the humidor review before, you know that I have a testing process that I use to try to get data to produce hopefully a more objective analysis of how well the humidor performs. And I've made some changes since the last round of humidor tests. The first change starts with this device it is a moisture meter and so it has two small metal probes up top and the way that it works is you push it into something and it will measure the moisture content inside now it doesn't actually work that well with my finger um, it does give a reading it's not a very accurate one um, but it does work very well with wood and drywall which is helpful if you're having say leaks in your home some of you may need to cover your eyes because I'm about to poke some holes in the inside of this Ellie blue humidor and the way that it works is you press down on the device it requires a bit more force than i'd honestly expect and eventually it will give you a readout in this case 9.6 percent now i am not a woodworker and i'm neither a woodworker nor am i an expert on different wood species i have no clue if 9.6 percent is good or bad but what i do know is that if i take enough of these readings over time i can get a better picture and so what i'm doing with the moisture meter is i'm not just taking a reading right there I'm taking a reading there and in this corner of the lid and in this top left corner and in the top right corner and also in the center. And I'm writing those down. I'm taking even more measurements in the bottom of the humidor, more than a dozen measurements in total. And I'm doing that before seasoning, after seasoning, after the bovita packs have been used, after the included humidifier has been used, after the humidor has been in the dry cabinet. And over time, those numbers can show me whether or not the humidor is, say, absorbing wood during, during seasoning, or whether when the included humidifier is in, if it's actually releasing more humidity from the wood because the included humidifier isn't able to keep up with humidifying the humidor itself. So it's one more set of data that I can use to try to get more objective results. The second change that I've made is the order of the test. I used to go seasoning and then testing the humidor with an included humidifier and then testing it with bovita packs. I'm now going seasoning, testing it with bovita packs, and testing it with the included humidifier. I've also added the option to re-season the humidor in between any of those steps. Fortunately, with the Ellie Blue, that wasn't necessary. The idea here is that I'm just trying to get better apples to apples comparisons, and doing the bovita test earlier versus later in the process hopefully can give me some better idea about the box itself and how well that performs. The final change that I've made is that I've lengthened out the length of time that some of these tests are taking place, just to try to get a better idea of how these humidors might perform in the longer term. Now, looking at the graph, nothing really stands out other than I guess it didn't get past the 75% threshold, but it spent more than a week north of 70%. This is also something where the moisture meter comes in handy. The pre-seasoning moisture meeting averages were 4.6% across all of the different places where I measured it. And post-seasoning, it was 9.4%, so it more than doubled. And it was a good indication that seasoning was needed and that it was effective in terms of getting moisture inside of the wood. So, um, you know, one score for the moisture meter there. I then took out the 84% seasoning packs and replaced them with three brand new 69% packs for the 13-week Bovida test. 
Now, if you look at the x-axis, which is the one on the bottom that runs horizontally, you will note that that is not 13 weeks. That looks like 30 days, and that's because it is. And the reason why is because I really wanted to zoom in to show you just how crazy this performance was. And if you look at the y-axis, the one on the left that runs vertically, you will note that the top of this graph is at 70 and the bottom of it is at 68. And yes, we are talking about a range that is actually less than 68 to 70% relative humidity. This is how good this humidor performed after at least the first week. The first week there was excess moisture from the humidification of the seasoning process. And so the next 12 weeks basically looked like this. Each one of the circles that you see on the graph represents a reading that was taken on an hour uh, by hour interval. So there's a total of 720 of these circles um, on the part of the graph that you see right now. And over the course of those 720 measurements, the overall range was less than one and a half percent relative humidity. In a given day, in a given 24 hour period, the maximum range was 1%. This is absolutely bonkers. This is the type of performance that I might expect from a really high quality plastic uh, travel humidor that's got a clasp on it that seals really well or some other sealed container. Because the thing about it is if you measure bovidas in a sealed container with a device like a sensor push, what you will find is that they sort of go in waves. They're not static. So the bovida naturally is not just going to hang out exactly at 69% in flatline. It's going to constantly be moving around. And the fact that the humidor did this level of performance, it, it's crazy. I, I was not expecting this from any wooden humidor. Um, and yes, this is a 30 day period, but the thing about it is, is that the 30 days preceding this basically looks the same on the chart or on the graph. Um, this is how this humidor performed with the Bovida packs inside. Um, just absolutely incredible performance. Now, what wasn't incredible was the Ellie Blue humidor with the two included humidifiers. Um, you see that it spikes up here, and this is an eight-week test. Um, and the way this works is that after four weeks, I open up the humidor and I check on the humidifier to determine whether or not it needs to be refilled. In this case, it absolutely did not need to be refilled because the humidor was struggling to stay below 75%. So right at the eight weeks, I ended up closing the louvers that Ellie Blues has on its humidifiers to try to reduce the humidity, and it did, although it didn't get below 70%. But more on the included humidifiers in a second. And finally, the last test is a dry cabinet. So we have an electronics dry cabinet here. It's primarily used by people that live in super humid climates to keep electronics dry to prevent corrosion. Um, but what I use it for is a way to set a static ambient relative humidity and then place humidors inside to see how well they actually seal. Unfortunately, the data from this test has been so inconsistent, I don't really know what to make of all of it. What I can tell you is this is the best I've ever seen a humidor do. Um, so there's that. On to the pros and the cons, and this is probably as hyperbolic as a half overview will ever get. So starting off the pros is the performance. As I put it earlier, bonkers. Um, it takes a lot these days to surprise me when it comes to cigars or cigar accessories, but I was genuinely surprised earlier this week when I pulled up the sensor push data in Excel. That Bovida test and the performance that it did I honestly didn't expect a wooden humidor to be capable of it. If you told me at the beginning of the week that there was a wooden humidor that over the course of a 30 day test with the Bovidas, 720 data points could have a variance of less than one and a half percent range in between the minimum and the maximum relative humidities, I would have been very skeptical. If you told me that that same humidor during that same test, that in a single day period, the greatest range would be 1%, which means that the other 29 days in that period, less than 1% change in relative humidity between the minimum and the maximum, at least according to 24 data points per day, uh, I wouldn't have believed you. Um, I, I didn't think a wooden humidor could do this well. I'm still kind of astonished that it, it did this well. I think it speaks to a very important point, which is that this is not just a pretty looking box, that it does actually function at a level that is different than a $500 wooden humidor. I've never seen a humidor perform that well, um, and I'm not sure I honestly expect another humidor to, to do that well ever again. Number two is the fit and the finish. I guess those are two different things. Um, and they honestly might be more impressive than the raw performance, which is sort of crazy to also contemplate. So when this humidor showed up, Brooks Whittington was photographing it in our photography studio over there, and we have pretty high powered lights. And whenever an accessory comes in, Brooks will photograph it. And he also is gonna try to look for any of the flaws that exist. So scratches, dents, smudges, whatever. And the reason is, is twofold. One, we wanna photograph them so that we can tell you about them. And secondly, because if we cause a scratch 
manufacturer a dent, we don't want to blame the manufacturer. We want to make sure that we have a record of what the product looks like when it showed up and then, you know, what it looks like after some use. And so after about a half hour photographing, Brooks came over and told me that he had not seen any flaws, that he couldn't find any scratches or dents or misalignments. And so I came over and I started moving the humidor around like this and under the lights and tried to see if I could find any scratches. And I couldn't do that. And so then I decided to grab a high powered flashlight and I started running the light up and down the humidor and moving the humidor at different angles to see if in fact we had been shipped a perfect humidor. We had not. Uh, there is a small scratch. It is up front. It's somewhere in this vicinity. Um, I know it's there because we photographed it. It's a little less than a quarter of an inch in length and um, it curves a little bit. I saw a picture of the scratch earlier this week as Brooks was editing the photographs. And I know it's there. I know basically where it is. And I spent 15 minutes earlier today trying to find the damn thing with the high powered flashlight. And I still honestly cannot find it. I, I do in fact know that it's there though. Um, and I know that the humidor wasn't perfect, but it was pretty close to perfect. And that is astonishing. And it's not just the lacquer and the lack of scratches. When I run my hands down the sides to see if there's any misalignment, there is absolutely no sign of misalignment. When I open up the humidor and I run my fingers down the edges, they feel perfect, which is a word that we really try not to use here at Half Wheel because what is perfect? The interior had no flaws on it until I started poking holes in it with the moisture meter. You get the idea. This level of quality is, I would imagine, very, very difficult to do to begin with. Um, and I say that as somebody that's probably purchased 40 or 50 humidors over the years, and have never seen anything remotely close to this. It also speaks to the quality control that Ellie Blue is willing to go through all these steps to make sure that even if a mistake does happen, that it doesn't get out to the consumer and then they pack them the right way and they end up in the consumer's hands in this level of condition, which is, as I put it earlier, astonishing. And the third thing I would say on the pros list is the design. I really like this design in terms of how the wood looks and it shows off, um, you know, sort of the woodworking skills of Ellie Blue. And if you don't like this design, that's fine, unless you're a bigot, in which case, uh, I, you know, I guess that's whatever. Um, but my point is actually not about this design. It's about the fact that Ellie Blue on its international website offers this size humidor, these dimensions, so not just 110 count humidor, just this dimension humidor in more than 60 different designs. No one else does that. And so if you want this humidor in a very traditional looking wood finish, they've got plenty of options for that. If you for some reason want Che Guevara on this humidor, they have like six different options of this size humidor with Che's face on it, or Mao's face for that matter. They got ones with animals on it. They make humidors that are wrapped in, um, you know, other types of exotic woods. They've got one that's wrapped in carbon fibers so if you don't want wood at all. And there's no other company that does this. And I think it's really important to understand that if you ever get to a point where you're willing to spend this much money on a humidor, Ellie Blue gives you the option so that you're going to get one that really fits what you're looking for. And quite frankly, if you have enough money, they will just make whatever you want. But that's different than their competitors. Their competitors offer, I don't know, a half dozen humidors per size at most in terms of the different finishes. Um, and, you know, who's to say of what's actually in stock at any given time? Ellie Blue is completely different on that, that regard. And so I think it's something that's really important to keep in mind when you're purchasing one of these or considering to purchase one of these, that you're not just going to get stuck in between choice A, B, or C. Unfortunately, there are some cons and they all revolve around one thing or, or two things, I suppose, technically. And it's oddly not the price. Uh, my issues with this humidor are related to these. It is the included humidifiers. These are florist foam humidifiers. And as the name implies, florist foam is foam that is used by florists. The way they work for cigar humidors is that you take them and you put them face up, take distilled water or something like this, which is a mixture of distilled water and propylene glycol, and you pour it into the the humidifiers. Eventually the foam will absorb all of the liquid that it can and it will start overflowing. Ellie Blue recommends that you take the floor foam humidifier and you put it face down and you let that excess liquid drain out because you don't really want it going on your cigars or inside of the humidor. I'd recommend waiting 10 or 15 minutes, coming over and shaking it off and then putting it back in the humidifier. I mean, I'd actually recommend throwing these away, but that's a different story. The way that floor foam is supposed to work is that the foam has absorbed all this liquid and over time it will evaporate and it's going to evaporate in the form of humid air. 
And that happens. Unfortunately, though, there are many, many issues with using fluorous foam as a humidifier. And they all revolve around one central problem, which is that fluorous foam humidifiers are going to put out way more humidity than your cigars want. And there's not really a great way to control that, at least not in a predictable and accurate manner. Something like this, which is the propylene glycol mixture, does help to limit it down. It slows down the evaporation rate. And in a very precise, controlled environment, you could change that ratio of water to propylene glycol and to help set a specific humidity level. The problem though is that's not realistic for anyone outside of a very specific lab controlled environment. And that's because there are any number of variables starting with temperature that directly affect relative humidity. As the air gets warmer, it can hold more moisture. And that will mean that your humidor will have more moisture coming out of the uh, fluorous foam humidifiers. As LA Blue oddly doesn't recommend using a uh, propylene glycol solution instead and I suspect it's because they have these louvers that are on the humidifier. So you can open or close these louvers or partially open or partially close them. The problem with this is though, is it's still treating the symptom and there's no real like accurate way. There's not some sort of, you know, gauge that you turn, you set it to 50% open or 30% open. You're just sort of haphazardly moving these things up and down. And the results that I had speak for themselves. So, there are many, many other alternatives um, to using fluorous foam humidifiers. My recommendation would be, once again, to put them in the trash. Technically, you could take a flathead screwdriver and take out the fluorous foam and replace it with something else. I will be replacing it with something like this. This is a wooden Boveda holder, and it holds these Boveda two-way humidification pouches. Unfortunately, LE Blue doesn't sell a Boveda holder or a holder for Boveda's competitors. It would be nice if they did. They will sell you another one of these for 134 euros, um, if I'm not mistaken, which is uh, absolutely insane. Um, LA Blue's competitors, uh, Davidoff and Prometheus specifically, use clay-based humidification. Um, I don't have extensive experience with clay as a humidification element, but in my limited experience, it's worked very well. Um, so it's somewhat promising there. Um, there are other options. Electronic humidification at this price point would be a, a very realistic option. Companies like Cigar Oasis or Cigar Spa sell battery-powered electric humidifiers. They have a big reservoir of water and a fan, and they blow out, uh, they, they blow against it, and it creates the humidity. Um, and they basically operate like a fridge. They turn on, and once it reaches a certain level, they shut themselves off, the fan turns off, and then when it dips below a certain relative humidity, the fan turns back on and turns the moisture back on. Those would work well. Um, super absorbent polymers, humidity beads, that would be a better option than fluorous foam. The humidity gel that Zycar sells, that would be a better option than fluorous foam. I and mean, basically anything short of a shot glass with a damp paper towel would be a better option than fluorous foam, which is why it's so crazy that Ellie Blue at this price point and with this well made of a humidor is choosing to use what is essentially the worst option for humidification. And the crazy thing is they don't offer an alternative. It's not like you can go buy a Boveda holder, you can buy an Ellie Blue branded electronic humidifier. Fortunately, plenty of other companies are willing to sell you those sorts of things, but the fact that LA Blue is still using fluorous foam is absolutely crazy. I find that whenever we're reviewing products that operate in sort of this upper echelon of a price point, there are two really common reactions that people have. One of which is this conversation about, is it worth it? And I find, is it worth it in general to be a relatively useless conversation? It has more to do with the person and their financial status and the way that they value purchases than it does with the product itself. For example, for some people, a $3,000 humidor, no matter what it is, is simply never going to be worth it. And it has nothing to do with what Ellie Blue did or did not do, and that's why I don't find it to be a very useful way to evaluate these products. The second conversation that seems to come up a lot of times is that people want to have this weird sort of bang for the buck value proposition about, you know, is the, would I rather have this humidor or would I rather have 10 $300 humidors? Here's the deal. If the question is, is this a good use of $3,000 to store the most amount of cigars? The answer is no. You didn't need to click on this video and we didn't need to buy this humidor to tell you that. The way that I like to evaluate products like this and products that function in this sort of price point is, is there a meaningful difference between spending, you know, to get into the 0.1% or the 0.01% than there would be if you spent to be in the 1% or the 2%? And I think in this case, the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, fundamentally, this is the same thing as a $500 humidor. They're both wooden boxes that you put cigars inside of. So fundamentally, the same thing. However, when you look at it from any angle, whether it's the performance, whether it's the finish, whether it's the wood that's used, whether it's the quality control, any of those things, it is a meaningfully different humidor than what you could buy for $500. You are paying for something that is truly different. 
fundamentally the same thing, but really, really different in terms of the execution level. And so if you are considering purchasing an LA Blue Humidor, I'm here to tell you that you are going to get something that's different. You're not gonna get a repackaged $250 Chinese made humidor. It is a meaningfully different product even if it still is, at the end of the day, a wooden box that you stick cigars inside of. If you'd like to read more about this humidor, there is a text review on halfwheel.com. You can also read other humidor reviews, including, I mean, basically every other one of them is a lot more affordable than this. You can read reviews of cigars and cigar accessories, as well as the daily coverage of the cigar industry, all on halfwheel.com.